Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial series about using Laravel to build an amazing blog application. Now you might have been following some of the previous videos I've been doing before and if so I thank you for your loyalty. Um, thanks for subscribing and um, nagging me on Twitter to get this series going. Um, I really have been trying to get it going for a while and um, I actually have a bunch of the videos ready and so I'm really excited to kind of get them out here today. Um, and so basically what we're going to be doing is for those of you that are brand new um, we are going to be focusing on learning Laravel, with, which is a PHP framework, and we're going to be using Laravel to build our very first blog application, um, or our first application, which is going to be a blog. Now, why a blog? I get asked that a lot. It seems like everyone kind of recreates a blog as a first application, and there's a reason for that. First of all, everyone knows how a blog works, and so it makes it really easy for learning, because when I tell you we're making a blog, what do you automatically know? You automatically know that we need some sort of maybe an authentication system that we're going to have, um, you know, posts are going to be the main element and there's going to be a page that lists all the posts in reverse chronological order and you know that each of those posts are going to have comments. So like you already, when I say blog, you're already kind of visualizing the end goal and everyone is kind of on the same page of what a blog entails. And so that's why a blog's a really good application to start with. And the other reason is because it doesn't involve anything overly complex but at the same time, it does get you into some of the elements that are going to be really important um, stepping stones for any application in the future. So even if you're doing, um, you have some other idea for some other application down the road, um, the blog's a really good starting point because um, it it provides a relational database. We're going to have comments that are going to belong to posts. So we've got kind of a, a good dynamic relationship there. Um, we're going to have a series of posts. We might have a basic authentication system in there and um, all sorts of stuff like that. So a blog is a really good digestible um, project to work on. It's simple, it's not going to take too long and you're going to learn a lot from it. And that's why we chose to do a blog. Even though everyone learns a blog, there's a reason for it. A blog is a really good application. Um, it may not compete with like WordPress because WordPress has been you know being built up for years and years and years and adding tons and tons of features. But we're definitely going to have posts and comments and all of that kind of stuff built in. And um, you're gonna see how easy it is in Laravel. It really, really is that simple. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, without further ado, let's have some fun. Now this first video, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to get the um, the Laravel project set up and then we are going to kind of go over, do an overview of the structure of the application. So we're not actually going to get into any programming in this video, but we're going to go ahead and get started. And now of course this is all necessary stuff to get any project started. So the first thing we, the first thing we need to do is open the terminal. So um, go ahead and open up the terminal if you haven't already. We're here in the, the root directory right now. And what we're going to do is start off by creating the Laravel application. So we actually did that in the previous video. We did that with a test application. So we're just going to go ahead, do it one more time, and do it really quick right now. So I'm going to be storing mine in a folder called Sites. So I'm going to move from the root directory into the Sites directory. So I'm going to do CD to change directory and go into Sites. You can see here I'm in the Sites directory now. If I do LS, you can see... I've got a playground file and then I've got a folder called tests and that was our previous, that was the application that we made in the previous video. So we're going to do the exact same thing in the last video, but we're going to call this one blog. So we're going to call Laravel new and then just call it blog. In fact, one thing I want to show you real quick before we get doing that is let's go ahead and do Laravel help new blog or just do new Laravel help new. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to give us all of the commands that we can write when doing a new Laravel application. So this is pretty cool. You can see here that when we use the new command, and you can do this with any command in almost any application. So if we're using Composer, um, Laravel only has one command, which is basically Laravel new. Um, but it, we'll be able to do that. This is a pretty common thing. You just put help before the command, and then it gives you all sorts of information, usage information about that command. So in this case, you can see that we're using the new command. It expects a name after the new, and that's going to be the, the name of the application. And then there's a couple other options here. So we could display a help message. Um, we could not output any message. We could display the version um, and so forth. So um, we're, we don't need to do anything here, but 
you could we could go into verbose if we wanted to just get more information about what it's doing behind the scenes. Basically, I want to show you that this is an option, um, even though we don't necessarily need any of it right now. So for now, let's go ahead and just do it. Again, I'm in the sites folder. So I'm going to do Laravel new blog, and that's going to create a blog folder in the sites folder. Okay, so let's do Laravel new blog. And then click enter. And you can see that it's going to go ahead and start crafting the application and get all of our um, folders and items in place. So here we go. The application is ready. Build something amazing. That's exactly what we're going to do. Now, um, we're still in the sites folder. So let's do CD. And then we're going to go into um, the blog. CD blog. And now we're in the blog folder. Okay, now just to, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and just, we can just output the ls command. This is going to list all the files that are in um that we just created, so and we're going to go over all these in detail. Um, so th let's actually open all these up in um, the text editor, which I'm using Sublime. So from my command line, I can do this um, Sublime, and then dot, and that'll open up everything in the blog folder. Now, if you want to be able to do this with Sublime, you do have to do a little bit of a tweak. I have a video on that as well. You can see that by clicking right here, and that'll teach you how to um, set up this command. But go ahead, we're going to click that, and you can see that we've opened it up in Sublime text. So let's take a look here at what we got, and we're going to take a look at the file structure. Now, um, the file structure for Laravel has changed a lot since Laravel 4. And so um, I'm going to go over that really quick right now, and that's going to be basically the end of this video. And then we're going to go in and actually start um, doing some development. So you can see everything is contained inside this folder called blog, which is what we created when we did Laravel new. Um, and then from within here, we've got several different folders that um, put the program together. Now you're not gonna necessarily need to know all of these and we're not gonna go over every single one of these because you don't need to understand every single file um, to build basic web app applications. But as you get more and more advanced, you're gonna wanna better understand what each of these do. So let's just kinda touch on some of the main points right now. Um, so the main folder you have up here at the top is called app. And app is kind of the, um, it's the main folder where most of this, the logic is happening. And so within app, you can see we have a folder for console. Now soon, if you guys remember in our previous videos, we had PHP Artisan, and we have all these commands for PHP Artisan. And um, here's some of them right here, you can see, where we can do migrations, we can do make, we can make um, uh, controllers and stuff like that. We're gonna go through a lot of these um, in the next few videos, actually. We're gonna start using this PHP Artisan. But what I want to show you is that through this command, this console, we can actually create new commands where you can actually extend Artisan to do new and interesting things. So that's something that we're not going to get into necessarily in this video, but as you get into more advanced things, um, that's something that could be really, really useful, where you can really extend your web application into the command line, which is awesome. And you do that through the console folder. Um, events, we can create events and triggers. Again, a more complex topic we're not going to get into during this tutorial. Um, but that's without those, these are stored in this folder here. Um, down here we have an HTTP, and HTTP is going to be, we spent a lot of time in here. We're going to have our roots file, which we're going to learn a lot more about this in about two or three more videos. But this basically says what all of your URLs are. So if someone goes to um, our website slash contact, the root, we're going to create a root for contact that's going to point contact to go to a certain page the, to display our contact form or something like that. And so every single URL that we're expecting for our application is going to be stored inside of inside of roots, which is inside of the HTTP. Another thing that we're going to use a lot of, even in this tutorial, is um, controllers. And we're going to talk about MVC or model view controller in the next video. And we'll better understand what controllers are. But basically, the controllers are your main logic for the application. So when you are processing the information to, before you display it on the screen, that all happens through a controller. And so the controllers are all stored in here. You can see that there's actually one created by default, one default controller, and it's called auth, auth which is authentication. So just to give you a quick idea, don't get too stressed out about all this, but um, this, is that I, this is an example of what we'll be doing with a controller. So you can see that we're actually um, validating data, and that's exactly what you do inside of a controller, among many other things. Um, so this is an example. We have one controller already, and we'll get some more created in the future, um, in a couple videos, actually. Next, we have something called middleware, and middleware is for processing information um, before every single HTTP request. So this is actually processed before it goes to the roots file, and 
This examples are, you know, if you're authenticating somebody, you're encrypting information and so forth. Um, we'd talk about cross CSRF and all this kind of stuff happens actually before the root, it hits the root. And so middleware is kind of that first line of defense and it allows you to write very um, replicated code that gets replicated very often. Only write it once, it happens in the middleware and um, you can use it um, ongoing throughout the application. So the HTTP job uh, uh, folder is gonna be used quite a bit. We'll be in here um, a lot. So we're gonna leave most of these other ones alone. We don't need to get too much into these. The one I do wanna note down here is user.php and this is an example of a model. So once again, we're gonna talk about model view MVC, which is model view controller. We looked at controllers up here under HTTP and controllers. Um, and then the other one that we're going to talk about is models, and this is an example of a model. So this is our user model, again, for authentication to authenticate users. Um, this is um, our connection to the database, basically. And so you can see here, we're going to, again, don't need to understand this, but just understand that this is um, basically our interface with the database where we control our users. So there's going to be a user table in the database, and then this is how we basically tie the database into our application. And that's called a model. And those models are just stored at the bottom of the app folder. Um, and they're just kind of stored down here. So you have user.php. We're going to create um, blog posts. So we'll have a post.php. And we'll be working on that soon as well. And so that's just an example of a model. Now outside of the app folder, we've got the bootstrap. And this is um, where a lot of the the core Laravel pro, um, files run. We've got our app.php, and then also the caching is in here. Um, we have a separate folder now for our config, and in the past, the Laravel applications um, config actually used to be under, I believe it was under the app folder, and they now move that to the root, so it's actually got its own folder here. And again, we're gonna go through this pretty soon, but this allows us to set up all sorts of um, settings and features for our application, um, such as our URL, the time zone for this, that the server should expect, and so forth. So we're gonna go through a lot more of this down the road, and you can see there's a lot of configurations files here. So there's the app, there's the authentication, um, there's caching, mail, all sorts of different things in here, the session, and you can configure all those settings in this um, dedicated config folder. Next is our database, and we'll go. We'll be working with this in this tutorial quite a bit. We're gonna talk about migrations, which I don't wanna get into right now, but migrations basically allow us to um, create database structures that can easily be replicated. So we'll get into it down the road, but basically allows us to, to um, codify our databases so that they can be easily recreated. So if I were to take this project and give it to someone, um, someone new coming on the project, they can actually use migrations to rebuild the database that I'm working with. It's really, really helpful, and we're gonna be using those a lot, and it'll make a lot more sense down the road. Another thing that we have here is seeds. And our seeds are um, for seeding the database. So that basically adds information, mainly for testing purposes. Um, when we're testing something, we may want to add a whole bunch of users just to get started. And so we're able to load it up as a seed and seed the database with those users, even if they're fake users. And that allows us to kind of have something in the database to work with, especially when we're in production. So that's what seeding is, and we'll be doing that as well during this tutorial. Um, the public folder is actually your the public facing folder. This is where you can see the HT access files in here. Um, the the index.php is in here, and this is where this is actually where every single um, URL request actually goes through the public folder. So everything here is actually publicly accessible. Here's our robot.txt as well. So all everything in this public folder is actually accessible to um, the outside world and all these other folders are hidden from the world. So everything in public is openly accessible and we'll talk a little bit about these but we're not going to mess around too much with those. We basically let Laravel handle that logic and then we do everything else um, uh, through the app folders and the controllers and model view controllers and those types of things. Um, next is resources. Now resources is really, is we're gonna spend a lot of time in this folder because this is where we store our assets, which is gonna be our um, CSS, our JavaScript, and those types of things. And then we're also, or our SAS files, we're gonna talk, we'll do some SAS. Um, and then it also stores our views. And again, we talked about MVC over and over again. And we talked about models already. We talked about controllers, which are the C of MVC. We haven't talked about views yet, which is the middle part. And the, these are the views. So a view is literally like your HTML. So if we come here and look at this welcome.blade, this looks really familiar to everybody, I believe. Um, you can see here, we just have some basic CSS. 
And this is all just a normal HTML document. So this is our HTML document. We've got some CSS um, stored in here. This is all the head of the document. And then you can see here the body is basically just a container with um, Laravel 5 in the middle. And if you remember, when we um, made our fake server, PHP artisan serve, and now if we go into um, a web browser, you remember that this is what we get kind of by default. And that's because the default um, the default view that we have is this. And you can see here that this is, um, this is the HTML that we're looking at. So this is actually what's given to the browser. So the view is going to be really important because that's actually the front end that everybody sees. We'll talk about this concept of front end and back end as we get throughout the video. The back end is all the logic happening behind the scenes. And um, the front end is basically what the users see. And this is the front end here. So views are what actually are seen by the user. And so we'll spend a lot of time in the views as well. Um, and so that completes your MVC um, structure as well. Um, we'll we're not going to get into test-driven development, but if you are working with test-driven development, you would put your tests in here. And then also you have your, your vendor file, which includes all of those dependencies. If you remember... Um, when we created the, um, when we used Composer to create a new Laravel program, when we did that, what actually happened is that there are a lot of all these other programs that you're reading in here. Um, class pre browser, there's Composer in here. There's um, the Laravel itself as an application, um, Swift Mailer. All these things are actually stored or actually brought in through Composer and um, and brought in with Laravel. And so all of those are stored in the vendor folder. So we're not gonna mess really with that. But if you ever wanted to read the code for Laravel, you actually can see that the, the source code for Laravel is actually right in here. So we could actually read, if you're wondering um, how they do routing and stuff, you can actually see all the logic behind the router right inside of here. So um, it's all open source and available here. So that's this is actually the logic of what's running this fancy Laravel application. So we're not going to play around in the vendor folder, but that's what's inside of there. Last couple things we have in here, we have some environmental environment files. We'll talk about those in the future, but this basically lets us have different setting files for different environments. And an example of environment would be um, testing or development or live and so forth. Production is what they call that. So that's what um, our environment files are. We'll talk about if you never used Git before, there's a Git and ignore built in here. And this just tells us to ignore certain files from um, when we're uploading it to a repository. Basically, when we're saving it publicly, um, it tells us what to not save. And these are some files that we need to keep um, that we don't necessarily need to, to save every single time. Um, and then we've also got our composer files. Um, if you're working with gulp, here's your gulp file, your package file. All of these really, um, these are different things. It's for your test driven development, all sorts of other stuff. So we're not gonna get into too many of these. Um, these are for more advanced users. Lastly, you have a readme. And so if you are uploading this to GitHub, your readme will automatically be put into the bottom of your um, repository. So if you wanna edit the readme, this is the basic Laravel readme and you can see it's written in markdown and you could obviously change that as well if you'd like so that basically is the rundown of kind of how these folders work now in the next video we're actually going to get started we're going to talk about mvc so you understand it because laravel is a mvc based um, framework it it runs off model view controller so we do need to understand that a little bit and then we're going to go through create our first route and um, create the first page of our website and get started so i'll see you in the next video